Este, voy activando la cámara. Thank y... you, Andrea, for your introduction. Please let me know if you see my screen then. Yes, we can see your screen. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. As Andrea was saying, I work in the services area as resource analyst at LACNIC. My main role is to analyze the IP request and ASN. Um, my tutorial will be focused on this, namely how resources are requested prior to that, how to create a user, and basically what NILACNIC can do for its members. This is from the standpoint of assigned resources. Now, this is an overview of my tutorial. This presentation will be available on the website. And these items cover the contents of my presentation, each, as I said. So first of all, we will be looking at the options provided by the NILACNIC platform. Secondly, how the request system for the resources works. As you are aware, the role of LACNIC is to manage the IP and ASN resources in the region. So the first step is to obtain an IP block or ASN. So that would be the starting point. Once you receive the resources, we have the fourth part here. So that you can, so after you receive the resources, Nilaknik can assist users in managing the resources. It also have other functionalities such as RPKI and reports, which could be useful when managing the A IPs and the ASNs. Another point that we'll be covering is how to update the contact of the organization so that LACNIC can have a fluent contact with its members. So if you wish to include in the contact another person, then you can also determine who will be the appropriate person which LACNIC should contact. So regarding the options of the platform, to start with, this is the initial screen of the LACNIC when the user logs in. One of the main reasons for creating the LACNIC is to have was to have a portal so that the users can manage the IP resources and the ASNs assigned by LACNIC. This was developed and implemented in 2017. This has been a gradual ongoing improvement with the addition of functionalities. This was always the starting point, and this is no longer limited to this. It has grown a lot from the initial stages. And the purpose of this tutorial is to highlight not only the basic functionalities this platform offers, but all the other tools that have been incorporated to Milaknik over the past four years. A further option that was introduced is online payment. The advantage of this is that users can have in the same place all the resources, invoices, whether they are accessing for the first time, they can pay the initial invoice, and then on the due date, they can renew the resources. So the platform, me like Nick, can have the current status of the account so you can easily, easily do online payment. A further advantage, and one of the things we expected to facilitate to users, is to be able 
to create a user's registry and to be able to update these efficiently. So Milaknik creates an organization containing the contact details of that organization or company. People are appointed who will be in charge of the administration. The Milaknik platform, in addition to including several people for resource administration, also allows you to keep an updated list or information on your contact details. So Milaknik can always find the adequate person at the company in order to consult or clarify any issues. One of the most recent modules in Milaknik is a registration to training activities and events online. This is under the module on membership. Macarena will ex be explaining this in the next presentation. And because the presentation will be loaded to the website, the website is milaknik.laknik.net. So you can create your own user there. So we will now go over to explaining how to use Milaknik. First of all, you have to enter with your user ID. The users have to be registered in LACNIC's database. When you register, you will have a user ID made up of three letters and sometimes a number. These, this is an example of a user's LOA 10. And for example, other users only have letters, so three letters and sometimes a number. And this is for an example of a Milaknik user. If you do not have a user, Milaknik provides the option of creating a, an account through a form. This is a very simple form. You just have to have an email address, a contact telephone number, and a postal address. Those are the three fields required to fill in when you register at Milaknik. The next slide shows what a user sees when joining Milaknik for the first time. This is the main screen for a user that is just joining Milaknik. In the central part, the main part of Milaknik, we have a summary of news that is provided by the communications area. This window allows you to access detailed information in LACNIC's website, lacnic.net. In addition to that, we have the tweets of LACNIC's official account. So that is what you see in the main screen. As you will note, there is no information on the organization because a new user has not yet become a member of any organization. We will later on see how the number of options increases once the user has been assigned the resources. Up here on the right, we have options. Go back to the start page the page we're on now, change of the interface, in other words, you can change the language to Spanish, English, or Portuguese. These are the ones that appear on the platform. And then you have the options of closing sessions and notifications. This bell regarding notifications is a warning, an alert of things such as news on IP blocks or new invitations to join events or training activities. As you can see so far, there is not much more information because the user is a new user. Then we have the menu of the context. This contains 
three options basically the profile which is a menu uh, it's a, and then you can see information on the contact details and also edit it it's like a drop down menu and then there is a secondary your main email address and then for example a personal address that is contained in this user that is in the profile then you have the link to the invoices as i mentioned this allows you to do online payment of the renewal invoices this is particularly useful so once the user has submitted an application and this is then approved in order to pay this assignment this can be done through the Milaknik platform and this is the section i would like to highlight most of all because although initially it might not seem this is the one that contains the largest number of options so non members this includes new organizations so organizations that wish to apply for resources this includes organizations of which the users are the contact what does this mean for example an isp makes an assignment of an ip blocks and then defines as a contact for that block the user that we have created then those ips will appear in milaknik but not as an associated organization but they will appear in the sub menu here in this part organizations that are not associated to it or that are not members this is something that we will explain later on in greater detail when we see resource administration and the final point that was recently added to milaknik is the portal for requesting resources this is the part where you can request blocks or for new users now let us look at further details cuando hacemos clic en organizaciones asociadas el se nos despliega este esta pantalla que ya no es el inicio principal que había mostrado este en un momento eh, ahí bien este arriba de todo tenemos eh, perdón en esta parte de abajo tenemos el listado de organizaciones de la que el usuario es contacto here you have a list of organizations where the uh, uh, contact is and here we have the contact info uh, the city um, the telephone and the contact information. Then any information that you want to change in the organization, you can do it directly here with pressing mm, on this uh, edit button. And if you want to change the contacts for uh, another user to administer the organization, you can also click on the same button. This part I don't see it because the camera is there, but there. This button that says uh, uh, create organ, uh, organization opens a form when you can uh, fill in the uh, contact information of the organization and so create uh, an identifier as the one you see down there at the bottom. This is the first step to request a new organization. Once you have created the organization in Milaknik, you need to enter, uh, uh, put a uh, press on IPASN, and then the uh, form for requesting uh, resources will appear. And with this screen, as the summary says, here you can request either IPv4, IPv six and ASN. Now there's a depletion of uh, the uh, stock uh, of um, IPv4 resources. So when users um, open a request, they can request IPv4 together with IPv6, as said in the policies. 
And if you need to, you can ask for an ASN, but please consider that you won't be assigned, uh, located an IPv4 until a block is released from the quarantine. If um, there and down there, you have the uh, option of IPv6. If you request IPv6 and you meet all the requirements, then the request uh, is approved uh, immediately. And uh, with IPv6, if you request with uh, uh, an ASN and uh, you meet the requirements, that can also be approved uh, immediately. So once you know the option that you want, if you want to request IPv4, considering that uh, there is a waiting list, or maybe you prefer IPv6 and uh, an ASN, then you choose uh, the appropriate form, depending on what you, you decided, and you fill in the information that you're requested to include in the form. It's quite straightforward. After you complete all the information, you submit the, uh, the form and you receive a notification mail. And within 48 hours, a registry uh, analyst uh, will uh, get in touch with you and tell you if there's anything else that you have to provide to complete the request. So that would be all for requesting resources as a user. Now I'd like to see how Milaknik is seen after the user receives the resources. You may see that uh, the interface is much more complicated, or at least it's more comprehensive than uh, what we had originally seen. On top, you see that there is, uh, they measure the percentage of uh, valid RPKI announces uh, and invalid and uh, not, uh, not found. I'm going to explain what they are as we move forward in the tutorial. And we also have uh, correct, incorrect, and not delegated um, reverse DNSs for the addresses. I'm going to explain that later. We also have a, a measurement of uh, IPv6 adoption. That is what share of uh, the assigned space is currently being um, announced for IPv6. If the assigned block is not uh, uh, being used, then you have a 0% and uh, the percentage uh, increases as the block is used. And finally, in the last on the last screen, you have your state of accounts, state, um, statement of accounts telling you whether you have a balance uh, or uh, here it's zero, so you don't owe anything. And, and uh, the date the bill will be issued. It's not uh, the deadline for paying, but um, it's uh, the day that the next emission of the, the invoice will be. So, and if you click into these uh, measurements, you will get uh, further details. Now, let me focus on this uh, uh, contextual menu that has much more information than the previous one. First of all, First of all, you have the user, you can access your profile as before. You have the ID of the organization that uh, is uh, the identifier that represents the organization. This organization is already a member of LACNIC. That is why it is in this session and not in the part of not associated, uh, non-member organizations. And uh, the information gives the, the postal address, a telephone, and uh, contact information of the organization. Then we have the IP and ASN resources. This menu is to manage the resources uh, assigned by LACNIC and uh, the ISPs. Some of the additional functions are subassigning IPs and delegating our DNSs. We're going to give you further details explaining how we can access these functions and how to manage them later on. Then we have uh, the services manual. It has a lot of information. 
It has RPKI tools, IRR. Gerardo will explain it later in the third tutorial. Geolocation, that is where the IPs are being used and the transfer list. And this is something that was added to Milaknik quite recently. It's a way that users that already have resources may request to be included in a list of organizations that receive IPv4 from other organizations that are ready or willing to uh, um, give them away. So this is a way the organization can show that they need IPv4 resources and uh, see if there are any organizations so that the organizations that are willing to uh, um, get rid of resources may see that you want them. And then the menus are, or the group of menus, we have membership, and this will be discussed by Macarena in the next tutorial. And again, online payments continue to be available for renewal. The last item is reports. In Nilaknik, not only can you manage the resources, but you can also know the status of the certificates, such as RPKI, RDNSs, the, uh, and uh, of our requests. And recently, they added a security report where you can see alerts, warnings of Milaknik that you may deem uh, interesting to ensure the security of the blocks. Now, concerning the first option of information, I wanted to highlight that in this section, you can see the information that was already entered of the organization. For instance, you can see that uh, Sergio Rojas is responsible for this in this uh, trial organization. Here you have the address, uh, the city, the telephone, those, that is the main information that you have to provide. Then at the bottom, you have the contacts. You see that there are three roles, the administrator who is in charge of this is the user that has more functions. Basically, it's the person in charge of maintaining all the functions of all and all the registries updated and manager, the rest of the contacts and the um, blocks assigned. Then we have the membership contact. Maka will explain how you manage this. Uh -huh how the membership contact uses Milaknik. And then we have the invoice user that receives uh, notifications of the initial and renewal invoices. If uh, a user is defined, but it is it gets outdated, for instance, an organization may change the contact person. So Milaknik offers you the possibility of uh, editing the contacts so that you may always make sure that you have a, a fluent dialogue with the member. Hence, if somebody uh, goes to another job, this can be reflected and fixed easily here. How do the contacts get updated? So first you uh, press on uh, edit contacts and this window will uh, pop up. At the bottom, you have a search field. Here you see it says buscar and it has three fields, ID, email, name, and last name. And you can, so there you put the information of the user that you want to use the contact. I know my, uh, the ID by my ID by heart, but you can also use your name or your email. So I enter the ID that is 
LOA10, and then I put search. That would be the initial step. After pressing on search, Milaknik shows me a list of the contact users. Having entered this phase, I check that the data are consistent with uh, the user, and then I go and see the options where I can choose the role I want to attribute to that person. In my case, for instance, I choose uh, to be the administrator. So after clicking on that button, automatically Milaknik changes the user and selects it to see what the role uh, would be if you saved these uh, uh, changes. If I'm happy with that, that may be all. But I may also uh, press on membership. And there it would appear here in the middle. And when I complete the changes, I save it. And that would be the last uh, step. So once they are saved, the changes will be kept in Melaknik, so that new person will be the contact in the future. So that would be all for updating the contact. Now we'll see the second part of the menu, that is the IP resources and how to manage them. Going back to the uh, context menu, you see the ID of the organization and the resources. It, it is important to check that we are indeed editing the resources of the organization that we indeed want to manage. If a user is associated to more than one organization, you, are, you have several uh, org IDs, and depending on uh, the org ID that you choose, then the listing of resources will change. User ID of your organization. Este, so if you don't have the user ID of your organization, you can check the renewal invoice and also the previous contacts with LACNIC in order to see the org ID. So we select IP resources in order to see the menu, and then we start management. Now, now we have this screen containing detailed information on the resources. Now, if we expand this image here, we can see the IPs that have been assigned and the autonomous system number. We then see how many of the DNSs have been delegated to this IP block. And also, how many of these blocks, he corrects himself, which part of this block has been sub-assigned to other organizations. Now, in this case, the slash 22 has no reverse DNSs, but it has one quarter that has been sub-assigned to another organization. That is to say, one quarter of its resources. I can sub-assign resources to another organization. In this case, I have a role of an ISP. I have resources assigned to me by Blacknick, and I wish to register this for a client of mine or an organization that is associated to me so that we can see in the register that they are using these resources. In order to do that, we go to sub-assign resources, we select the name of the organization or the ID, and Milaknik shows us all the organizations that coincide with that name. You then click on the arrow to continue, and then you have this menu for sub-assigning the resources. The option we have available is the basic method. You click on next. It, this was a slash 24, if you remember. 
we have been assigned a slash 22. So in order to subassign this, we should select a smaller block, that is to say a quarter of the original block. Then you click on add, and then this would be a confirmation of the subassignment that you wish to register. This is a destination organization, and this is the IP. Now, once we confirm, we click on confirm, the sub assignment is ready, and that sub assignment organization receives the block. If we wish to double check, we go to sub assignments, and then we see there the full list of the sub assignments of that block. In order to delegate reverse DNS, uh, reverse DNSs, you click on that button and you access this menu. In this menu, you enter the IP on which the server is running that has a DNS. Then we click on add. And when we click on add, this block is entered in this field. Then a new file is created, a new form, where you have to enter the qualified name of that server. It is not valid to add an IP address. You cannot enter I, I aliases. You just have to enter the domain name. Once we have this, we click on next, and there the authority of the domain is checked. And finally, we get a summary of the reverse. And once this has been confirmed, it is already confirmed and registered. I will go over to the next point. I wanted to speak about RPKI and resource certification. The main role of RPKI is a centralized organization in charge of checking of what is being announced in the internet. It often happens that some prefixes are announced through ASMs that are not uh, the correct ones. And it is sometimes difficult to check whether an announcement is valid. What RPKI allows to do is that bearing in mind the current announcements and what the user wishes to do, to then validate only those announcements that the user which owns these IPs wishes to validate. Now, how do we go about this? Milaknik has a section that is dedicated to RPKI. RPKI allows you to enter the ASM through which the resources will be announced. The validity period for that certificate and the resources that are going to be announced through that ASM. Now, this implies that when in internet you see an announcement of IPs that do not coincide with these parameters, if only defined by the administrative uh, user, then that will be classified as an invalid announcement. So we can be sure that only those resources will be announced that we wish to announce and in accordance with the parameters that we established. So that is the concept behind RPKI and resource certification. To access this menu, you click on services and then you go to RPKI and then this opens this window. How do we define these parameters for resource certification? If you already have experience with creating RPKIs, then it is likely that you will also know how to go about the syntax. 
for those of you who are doing this for the first time for creating an ROA, LACNIC Labs offers the option of a ROA wizard. ROA wizard is a tool where you enter the IP block as one of the parameters, that is to say a known factor that you get when you the IP is assigned. And based on that, and on the logic of the certificates, then creates an optimum announcement for certain network scenarios. So the advantage of ROA wizard is that it already contains the format required by the Milaknik RPKI. A further point is that it allows, also allows you to load these directly or to copy them with the existing format. This is the website if you wish to see how this works. It's tools.labs.lacnic.net slash ROA hyphen wizard. In order to show you rapidly how this works, this is a tool that requires some practice you really have to be cautious when using it because you won't be able to distinguish between those announcements that we wish to validate and which announcements we wish to correct. So ROA wizard does the following. We enter the resources and we See, receive ROA suggestions. If we see that the suggestions we receive, the ASNs we receive are ASNs that we do not know, then in that case, we shouldn't take those into account. So let me give you an example. I included here the this block here as an example, so we can then receive an answer, we click on the process and we get back the ROA that it considers as necessary. As you see up here, the ROA is for the ASN 28,000. This is an ASN that has been assigned LACNIC and this is the block that has been assigned. Therefore, we have these parameters that we have to check by hand. What do we have to check then? The ASN, is this an ASN that I wish to validate? Does it belong to me or to a provider? Is that, if yes, then the ROA suggested by ROA wizard, then is correct. The maximum length, do I wish to announce smaller blocks than the block I have, for example, if I have a slash 23, do I wish to allow a slash 24 block? If that is the case, the maximum length should be shorter than this. If I wish to announce this completely, then this ROA is something I, that is not useful because it has to be more specific. So what we do in this case is to change the criterion. We have several criteria in the ROA wizard. So once you change the criterion, then you have two options of ROAs. One is announced only in the complete block and one that announces this block partitioned in slash 24s. These are two options offered. One has a criterion and looking at the, the LACNIC Labs documentation, which then allows you to distinguish if this is what you wish to have. The advantage of this is that once I decide which of the two I wish to select, I can click on download and automatically this downloads a text file where I have to enter in the LACNIC. So having done that, we would have everything we need in order to create my ROA. So if we now go back, once I have the text file, I go to this section here of Milaknik 
and I copy the text file I received. The second last item has to do with the RPKI status report. In order to access the reports, you have to click in the context menu. Then we go to RPKI status, and then we get this screen. This screen will only contain useful information once we have created a certificate. What we see here is that although the majority of our certificates are valid certificates, there is a smaller percentage, 6.9%, which are invalid certificates. What does this mean? This means that we define an ROA, the announcement checked, Milaknik checked in internet, and they saw that there were some mismatches validated by the ROA. So what we have to do is to verify whether those ROAs that are invalid are not things that we really wish to validate. The important thing is that the valid announcements should be the ones that we are doing at the moment and to then invalidate everything, all those things that we don't want to have published through the ASN of a third party, which we do not know. In most cases, this comes out as IPv6, which is 100% valid. If we follow the advice of the ROA wizard and we create the ROA as indicated in general, the announcement will be 100% valid. And when we create the RDNS, we have to have the server running in authoritative mode, and it can often happen that the server disconnects or is no longer authoritative, calling the registration of that RDNS. So for that purpose, we have the RDNA status report, and we can check in real time whether the server is running or not, and whether the server we registered in Milaknik is authoritative or not. So for that purpose, we go to reports, we go to RDNS status, and then we get this graph here. In this graph, we see a summary of all the IP blocks available and the percentage of those available that is delegated, that is that an authoritative DNS uh, has been uh, assigned and the rest appears as not delegated. You see that the uh, incorrect uh, percentage is uh, opaque percent. Here, this, um, the options are incorrect or not delegated. It's different from RPKI. And if it's, if it's incorrect, then you have to correct it. And at the end, Milaknik gives you a list of all the RDNSs registered uh, as correct and incorrect for you to know whether you have to correct it. So that's the end of my presentation. I wanted to thank all of you for having uh, attended. And I think that now we'll open the Q&A session. Andrea, are you there? Yes, thank you, Lorenzo, for your presentation. I'm, I'll read the questions uh, that we have in the Q&A panel. The first one is in Spanish by Rosina Gonzalez, and it says, good morning. What are the minimum technical requirements to request an ASN, and when do we have to request it? Excellent question. Rosina, thank you for your question. The technical requirements basically would be to have an announceable IP block in the internet. What does this mean? You may, you can receive 
an IP block from LACNIC. All our blocks are announceable because they are at least a slash 24 or slash uh, 48 for IPv6, or else you can receive an IP block of that same size from your provider. Once you have been assigned a block, then you can use the, AS, the ASN and consequently you can request it. When should you request it? Well, the ASN the, um, is used for clustering your network or pulling your network together and announcing it in the internet. And uh, another alternative would be that the IP block that you use may be part of your providers. When an organization wants to define in the internet that its network is under a certain ASN, then it's the time when you should request this resource. It's a way you can group together all the IPs in a recognizable resource. Very good. Let's go to the second question. Ramon T3K0. It says, N a negative balance, does that mean that I have a balance in favor? Uh, no, a negative balance means that the invoice, the renewal invoice has been issued, but it has not been paid. Please, if you have any questions about your statement of account, please uh, contact facturacion at lacnic.net and they can uh, tell you what your account um, is. Um, uh, it, it may be positive if you paid an excess of what you had to pay for renewal. It's in green and uh, uh, that means that you have uh, that money in your favor. The next question is by Carlos Gutierrez. It says, the organization for which I uh, um, administer the resources, uh, um, I apply as a IP4 address recept receiver. How do you, what's going on with that process? Well, let me go back to the presentation so I can show it more clearly. Um, I don't know. Uh, can you see my presentation? Can you see it? Yes, we can see it well. You need to enter uh, as the administrative uh, user of organization. You go to services and in the transfer list, you see the status of your request. Anyway. I recommend that if you have any doubts about uh, the status, you should uh, get in touch with uh, the registry of LACNIC and to answer the mail of your uh, the last contact to see whether there there's any news. We may have responded and uh, maybe you uh, haven't received it because there's a pending uh, uh, question. So uh, you can see that here in Melacnic, but if but maybe you should write to RT uh, slash uh, dash. Uh, uh, um, well, we we may we we are, we're going to put that um, uh, email address in the chat uh, panel. The next question: How can I delegate blocks uh, greater than a slash twenty four? That is slash twenty five slash twenty six etc. Something that you need to consider is that the procedure would be the same. Once you have the uh, RDNS delegation of the block, uh, let me say it in a different way. Blocks over a slash 24, that is, slash 23 and 22 may be sub-assigned. Vuelvo, vuelvo a, este, para atrás. Eh, para registrar el RDNS de, de un barra 25. In order to register the uh, a slash 25 and 26, you don't need to do anything. What happens with delegation is that when you delegate a slash 24, automatically it is 
considered that everything underneath is delegated. So you, you put a slash 24 that includes the smaller blocks and everything is registered automatically. Good. The next question is by Diego B. And it says, can uh, the payment be done uh, um, in for three in three years time? Can, can you pay? Uh, you can pay for an annual renewal, but we can't issue the invoice for over uh, beyond one year. So you may pay more, but you will be only issued uh, a receipt for the annual um, bill. So you may see that uh, as money uh, available in your account and it will appear in green. You can ask the people of facturacion in Melaknik, but the the invoice indeed is uh, issued for just one year, no exceptions. The next question, anonymous. He asks two questions in Spanish. If I'm a technical contact, why can't I create ROAs? And I'd like to know what plans you have to be able to delegate the ROAs management. Yes, it's right. Indeed, the technical contact cannot create ROAs. That is something that only the administrative contact of the organization can do. And this is by design. The idea is that context uh, external uh, to the organization, you know that you can define another contact as, as I showed, but the administrative contact um, of, has access to ASN and the IP. What might happen is that the uh, technician may be only of the IP and not, not the ASN, and that's the reason why you shouldn't have a choice to create ROAs for those resources. I think that at present, the idea, the plan is to keep it that way. That is only the administrative uh, contact can change it, uh, can create the ROAs. But, but you can you can contact uh, the uh, uh, hostmaster, and maybe if there's anything that um, I don't know, if you get a different uh, thing, information, the, the, you uh, put hostmaster at uh, lacnic.net. Jorge Gonzalez asks, if I'm a private company, should I request an IPv6 block to my ISP or directly to LACNIC? Thank you, Jorge, for your question. Well, this will depend solely on the need of the organization. There, It's not that one option is more valid than the other, but you need to consider that the blocks uh, assigned by your ISP, you'll be able to use them uh, for the time that you are have a contract with the organization. While if you uh, have it with LACNIC, that belongs to your organization. And if you change your ISP, you don't have to change anything. That is the advantage. Now you have to weigh whether you should request it to the ISP or to LACNIC. Very good. Now we're going to read five more questions. And if there are any left, we beg you to please uh, readdress, the, forward them to the uh, mails that we'll give you in the chat panel, because we need to go on. The next question is by Jorge Gonzalez. It's in Spanish and it says, no, sorry, by Guillermo Paliero. And it says, can you explain the type of reports are announced uh, in uh, the uh, security tab? This is quite a new model of a CSER, uh, LACNIC CSER. So far, they have done 
they have made some improvements and they have added this information. But for the time being, we don't have the documentation exactly. I think that if you receive security warnings, the first thing you are requested to do is to contact the CSER for more information. If you enter Milaknik and you press the security tab, you see a listing where you see IPs, the, the ASN that may be in jeopardy, and there you'll receive an explanation of why you received that warning. That is the current, uh, uh, that is how the tab is working at present, but, but you could check it uh, with a C zero of LACNIC to see why you receive any warnings. If you enter the security tab and you don't have any block list, that means that uh, there are no warnings for you, so you can forget about it. Uh, the next question is by Anonymous. It says, may I sign a delegated block uh, by a provider, a block that is dele was delegated by a provider? No. The ROAs can be created only by the administrative that received the uh, the block from LACNIC. It needs to be a member organization and have received resources from LACNIC. If you received a sub assignment from your provider, it is it's up to your provider to register the RPKI. Good. The next question is by Diego B. It says, may I request a new ASN so that it would generate an ISP and a transfer of IPS to this new ASN? <laughs> I'm rereading it. May I request a new ASN to be generated an ISP? transfer to this new ASN. If you request a new ASN, the purpose should be for announcements. Uh, the need for an additional ASN would be rather to have two different routing policies, not to receive an IP transfer from the ISP. The IPs are assigned to the organization, but not the ASN number. An organization can have more than one IP block with the same AS, ASN, or also two ASNs, for example, to apply different routing policies. But it is not necessary to re request a new ASN to receive a transfer of IPs. You can receive more IPs from your ISP with the current ASN. I'm going to read out the last two questions that we have here. I'm going to read them together so we can close. Jose René and Pablo Marianete are asking the following. For end users, what is the maximum block that you can request? And can you have more than one contact with the same function in the organization? For example, two people who can administer IP, ASN, and R, GSS, and DNS? Well, Jose's question. The maximum IPv4 block at present is the same for AS. ISP and for end user, it's a slash 22, according to the phase three of the exhaustion. If you're referring to IPv6, there is no limit to this. As a minimum, you can announce a slash 48, but if justified, you can receive more addresses. And the other question asked by Pablo, Milaknik currently does not allow defining more than 
one contact for different roles. In other words, if you have an IP block and you want two people to manage these, what we recommend is to generate an alias, an email that the two contacts can receive. And then this alias is defined in the profile as a contact information for that user. So all the two will receive the same contact. If you have two different IPs or two different ASNs, you can define different contacts, but you cannot define two contacts for the same resource. Can you see my screen, Andrea? Yes, we can. Before starting, and regarding the question asked in the previous blog by Ramon regarding the status of your account, let me confirm that, yes, if you have a negative balance in your account, it means that you have money in favor, so you can be sure that you have money in, in your balance. Now, going on with Lorenzo's presentation, I will now focus on the membership block. Like Andrea was saying, I'm membership services analyst at LACNIC. For those of you who are now joining us, uh, the MILACNIC platform was created to unify the resource management in order to prevent the members from going to different platforms. This is created to provide, provide more, uh, more user-friendly option. And I will be focusing on the membership module. Who can access MILACNIC platform? This platform was created for all MILACNIC members, but the members of Brazil and Mexico do not have access because they manage resources directly with their own NIRs. This platform is a service that is free of charge for all our members. It has no cost at all and is a tool that has the purpose of assisting them. We included this tutorial in the agenda for the purpose of our members and also for the community. You might not be a member now, but you can become a member in the future. And also because we want to highlight that this work was carried out by the entire LACNIC staff. We have a large team and for have been working on this for many years in order to bring about improvements. So this is something that we want to share with you. What are the objectives of today's presentations? As a analyst of the membership services, we want to explain how you can register to the events and webinars and training activities, both face-to-face -face and online. This is a benefit that all our members use a lot, but we want to explain some details. Also to know about your history of regarding participation in the LACNIC events and courses. This also allows you and your team to see your performance and also to access the benefits included in your membership. This is the URL, milacnic.lacnic.net. This presentation will be available in the website. So you can click here and you can go to the Milacnic site. This is the home page. The official contact of your organization have direct access to the functionalities. Your organization has five official contacts, the administrative, membership, abuse, and technical. These five official contacts are those that have access to all the functionalities. When you 
start your session, you have the bell and also pending issues. You can access in either way. This will show you the new events, what activities you can register. So that is one of the ways you can access these. How can you register these events and courses? In membership, the membership department, every month we send out a list of the courses and webinars that will take place that month. For example, the registration period when it starts and also a link to register. It is precisely that link that then takes you to this MILACNIC website in order to register. So you access pending issues and there you can see the different courses. There you can register if you wish. One of the other things is that these courses and webinars don't have a maximum limit of participants for members, so everyone can benefit from this. If you have a working team, and you think they might benefit if they participate in the I advanced or basic IPv6 course, we encourage you to register, or you can also transfer that registration. In order to transfer registration in an event, you click on transfer. Here you include the name and last name, as well as the email, who you are inviting. This person will receive an email with the invitation and a form that they have to complete. It is very important for you to fill in this form so you can make sure that indeed you have you, you, you registered for this uh, training that you were invited to. Now, who can use or transfer uh, participation? As I said, there are five official uh, users, administrative uh, um, invoice membership, uh, and then you have the uh, uh, technical and abuse. All the users can use them or transfer these. Now, it is important for each organization to take some time, to devote some time to see who would be the proper person to be the membership uh, contact because it has some peculiarities. Because this is the person who can either use or transfer the, uh, um, the tickets or the um, uh, um, places for the in-person event. Each organization has two uh, invitations uh, for the events. So it's the membership contact that can either use or transfer those invitations. That's the only person who can do it. Another peculiarity about uh, uh, the membership contact is that it's the only one that can vote in our elections when defining the statute. And by the way, next Wednesday, Wednesday 14, we start with the elections uh, for the board, two positions in the board. So the membership contact uh, will receive an email uh, with a link to vote only the membership contact. That is why I highlight the importance of this contact. Another peculiarity that we have in Milaknik in the membership uh, section is the general participation. The good thing here is that each organization can see the record, uh, the history of uh, your company. We have the annual uh, training and the in-person training that LACNIC does in different countries, the online events, that is the webinars and the trainings that here we, we, we call it the LACNIC campus. And it's important so you can keep track of the people in your organization that are uh, uh, that have uh, attended the different courses and webinars to see whether they started they completed it another option may be that maybe they didn't complete it so it's a good uh, uh, 
uh, track record so that you may see who is using this benefit. As to the uh, status participation, um, it's a bottom-up, uh, LACNIC is a bottom-up uh, organization, so all the members can vote and can speak. We want to listen to you, but it's also a responsibility that you have. So there are two instances in which you can make use of that right, that is the assemblies and the elections. The assemblies uh, happen in uh, May, and uh, here in, in our uh, in-person events, and here in Milaknik, you can see whether your organization participated and voted. And as to the elections, this is another key model for us as an organization and for you as members, so that you may uh, get involved. Milaknik has a fiscal and an electoral uh, committee and um, the board. All these people are elected by you, by the members. That is why your participation is so important, because you are electing a representative of yours to be there in LACNIC. Here you can see whether your organization is enabled to vote, whether they voted, and uh, well, you won't see who you voted, the, the organization voted, but uh, but here on Wednesday, we will add uh, 2020 elections to positions for the board, and you'll be able to see whether your membership contact voted indeed. Another part that fortunately is very popular, many people use it, and we see that it works, is benefits in general. This Milaknik platform, the idea was to give it some space where you can have access to more information and learn about all these benefits. Here, by the membership uh, benefits, you have the category that you have as an organization. This is important because in some categories, the benefits may change. So it is essential for you to know what your category is not just for benefit purposes, but also to see the value, the worth of your vote at the members' uh, elections, because uh, there's a scale of value of votes that's published in the website too. So the more IPs uh, you have, uh, or your organization has, the greater the worth and weight of your vote. So there are some benefits that may change. But I invite you to visit Milaknik, the membership uh, part, so that you may see all the benefits in your category. So I'm sharing this so that you can see it, but it's important. It's a benefit that you can uh, have. I want to highlight that all this is free of charge. When you pay your renewal invoice for the IP resources, automatically, you, once again, you can use these benefits. There's, you don't have any quotas. This quota for a renewal of resources allows you to access all our benefits. And you can see that in the Milaknik platform. So. Thank you for your time. This was a short tutorial just to give you an idea of the most relevant things. But if you have any questions, I'll be paying attention to the Q&A panel. And if you have any specific questions, write membresia at lacnic.net. For us, it's very important for you to make use of all these benefits because we work a lot in, la in the staff of for you to do that and we'd like to receive your feedback thank you maka you're bright in all your roles we have two questions should i read them right the first is by carlos perez it says 
my organization has only three types of contact administration membership and uh, invoice is this normal should we ask for the creation of the two uh, contacts missing it's carlos perez carlos thank you for your question if you enter mila Knick, you should have the, the three contacts that you uh, mentioned are the official ones however each blog has its abuse and technical contacts. What may happen in your organization, and we can, uh, you can send us an email and we can help you, but what may happen is that the abuse and the technical contacts are the same as the administrative or the um, uh, invoicing or um, membership, but, uh, so that's why you, do, you don't see it. But uh, there, the, the idea is that you may have five different contacts if you wish. Good. The, the next question is by Rolando Delgado. It's in Spanish and it says, what's the price of membership? The price of membership changes depending on the IPs, on the category that you are requesting. I invite you to visit the website of Blacknik so you may see the categories and learn about the prices of the category that you want to request, the resources you want to request. That's why it varies. It's from $600 onward. But payment is on a yearly basis. Very good. The next question is by Jose Oric Uturungu Mendoza. And, and it says, what are the minimum requirements to obtain a membership uh, for a public organization? Now, as to the minimum requirements, it's not with a membership area, it's with registry. That, uh, the, and that is more technical. So I invite you uh, Jose Eric, if you can uh, send a uh, host master uh, mail to host master at LACNIC, they can guide you. And there's also a form in the website where you can request for resources and our colleagues will guide you through it. Very good. So we have no more questions. We invite you to forward these questions to membresia at uh, LACNIC and the course in the website. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. We are at your disposal if there's anything you need. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Macarena, for your presentation. We are going to share this uh, 30 minutes telling you how the services of LACNIC may have an impact in the operations of your companies. The, the services offered in LACNIC uh, we, um, uh, the benefits that uh, the services that we offer and how each of the current uh, operations may have an impact on the operations of your companies. So there you see the services that are included and maybe the core of our organization is that we are the registry of uh, the IPs in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. And our key function is to keep record, to keep track of who has which resources, what company has this such and such an IP or autonomous system. So the question of who has the IP addresses, it's a question that LACNIC has uh, had for some time from the beginning. Now, these questions, this information that we store and that we offer through the uh, through who is, for instance, through those uh, uh, questions, uh, uh, the, the 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 files that we show with Red App uh, uh, are ways you can send queries to ask who has the IP addresses. In recent times, LACNIC has worked uh, on um, uh, seeing how. Uh, the members should uh, publish and uh, point out how your uh, 
uh, resources, that is the IPs and the autonomous systems need to be used. And with the occurrence of RPKI, that was one of the first uh, um, uh, times that we started seeing how we could declare how the IPs are used. Lorenzo discussed what the ROA is. It's to declare the uh, autonomous system that is authorized to gen generate routes for your companies. With the appearance of IRR, we started to enable the use of the autonomous systems, how your autonomous systems connect who are your clients, who are your providers, if you have a root server, where it's located. So we started to allow that authorization for using the IPs and the autonomous systems. These services, the traditional services, the WIS service, have an impact on the operations and maybe not an immediate impact. It is possible that your companies might have information on changes in the information or the contact details for those blocks. And these, this information might end up in the registries weeks later, in the, regist in the records. So that the operations are not, affect, are not affected by the delay. Sometimes it is days or weeks. But this, with services such as RPKI and IRR, when you start seeing how you authorize the use of the IPs, then there is an immediate need for reflecting the real information of your organization in these systems. So. That is why we have the reverse DNS systems. So updating this should be as close as possible to the moment in which it is needed. So these systems, these new services that allow responding to the question how things are used, we might need to have a more a greater immediacy regarding updating the information. Now, speaking about the IRR, at the end, I will show you a couple of videos that shows how this is generated in LACNIC. We're going to share the videos and we will be explaining what this is about as we watch them. Now, one of the features of IRR developed by LACNIC tried to find solutions to the classical issues. For example, a traditional problem of IRR is a localization. I create account, an account normally. With my account, I create my organization. My organization is assigned an IP and the autonomous system. And then I start declaring or stating how these are done or how my IPs interact with the, with the autonomous systems that I declared I have. And this can also be done by a colleague or by a company that is not has not been authorized for those networks. So ultimately that information provide is provided by a person who created an account in that registry. So the RIR of LACNIC solves this naturally because we have a contract with you as members we have information on your registration, as was explained by Macarena and Lorenzo. So we can see who has been authorized for certain groups of IP addresses and for autonomous systems, and they, they can only operate with these networks. So naturally, our IRR it stems from a very robust authorization system. Our IRR supports six types of objects people, persons, maintainers, route, ASX. One of the good things of our IRR is that much of this information, for example, people, persons, maintainers, and others, is information that we can generate based on pre-existing information. So these are objects that on your side generate 
an additional type of management. So if you maintain the registration information, these supplementary objects have updated information on contacts, organization, and autonomous systems. Then we have two additional objects, which are routes and the route object six. These are equivalent to the ROAs in RPKI. They have the same role. They allow to state which is the origin AS associated to a block. And because we have a database that solves this situation, our IRI takes up the RPKI information and generates this. We have then another site where information is not duplicated. It is created once and then provides RPKI data and in the IRR. Finally, the AS set object is an object that we cannot generate it with the information available. To complete that object, we need you to complete a form and state how you use your autonomous system. AS set is an object that allows you to associate another group of autonomous systems. What is the use of AS set? Any use that you can give to an autonomous system as declared by the authorized organization. The most common uses are to declare which are my clients. I create an AS set and I say my ASN is associated to these which are my clients. And I tell my provider that consumes this AS set to allow transit to my clients through me. And also to clarify the providers. That is why there is a group of providers and I have an AS set for my providers. And there I include the AS sets, as I said, of my ISPs. And then I can have an AS set as a route server or any other kind of combination or any additional use that you can give to a group of autonomous systems generated by the person responsible for those resources. Now let us go back before having a, taking a look at the videos as to how IRR is used in Milaknik. So there are services that have an impact right away and others that do not. And those that have a direct impact immediately start to become a problem when we have to manage things through the web interface. Let us imagine a situation. We are an ISP, a large ISP or medium-sized ISP, or we are, for example, a smaller company, but a company that has highly automated and efficient systems. And I have a network of offices with hundreds of offices or agents or sales agents or call centers. So a lot of people that try to provide a good service to my clients. So I have a group of corporate clients and require this big support. And when that corporate client requires to announce the ISPs that you announced, you have to send this request to an email address of a contact so one of the persons that have access in your company, where well, you have thousands of employees, so there's one that has access to the LACNIC account in order to configure a reverse DNS or an ROA so that that corporate client can use the IPs I gave to that client to another provider or their own. So you're going to send an email and, and then to the technical expert, they click on me LACNIC and this ends up generating an ROA. Or I have a large routing area in my organization and I get I have new clients, new sales agents that manage to sell my product to other corporate clients. So they have their own ASN and the request to include that the autonomous system in my ASN the client will end up in an email of a provider that has to go to Milatnik and click there in order to have the corresponding ASN. So this is the problem. 
So it would be like a bottleneck of all the structure provided by the organization to its client and how these systems, which ultimately affect the operations in your, of your companies and your clients, and affect this by limiting it to just one person. So in order to respond to this situation, we have the supplementary service provided by LACNIC for some time now. And basically this allows the systems to communicate the ISPs of the LACNIC members, regardless of the category, so that they can interact with the LACNIC systems through this API. And API is the interface for programming applications. That is the acronym we have. This is a communication point that provides services to its members. Now we have two communication channels. We have the web interface for those clients that can use that functionality. And we now have a group of functionalities that enable to have automations. Imagine a sales agent has a new client with its own ASN and that sales agent loads a form and say, well, this is my client. You have a couple of verifications are required. That is my interaction with the API through the IRR of the LACNIC. And then the ASN of my clients, clients then includes the ASN of the provider. Or I'm ISP and I give my client a web interface so that I can interact with my service. And one of the services that I offer is to create the ROA. There is a form that is preloaded. And here you have to declare the ASN that you're going to use for that purpose. So that organization creates this ROA. That ROA goes to the ISP. The ISP sends it to Nilaknik, to the API in order to generate the corresponding ROA in RPKI and as a result in the IRR. So these are some of the possibilities that you have with the API. The API is in its first version, version one, and this allows you to do changes in the registration system as well as modifications in the reverse DNSs the version that we wish to complete by the end of year are going to include the options of RPKI and AIRR. So this would end up rounding up the functionalities that are necessary so that the organizations that do require it. And ultimately, as we started to have an influence on the operations of your companies in an important way, we need you to have an additional communications option with our services and not just the web interface. So now we're going to have a brief, uh, we're going to stop now to see if there are any questions. So we can see how objects are created in the IRR and other information that we might have. So far we have no questions. can write your questions in the Q&A panel if you wish. And otherwise, you can go on with the videos. So let me find the video. So let us watch the video directly. Gerardo, discúlpame, ¿sabes que no estamos pudiendo ver el video? Mm, bien, bien. Vemos bien, cortada bien. la pantalla. A ver, déjame compartirlo de forma distinta. Compartir. Ahí compartí toda la pantalla. En el IRR de LACNIC 
Excellent. In the IIR of La Cunec, there are six objects that are administered. Yes, now we can hear it and see it. Persons that are associated to the contact information of the uh, LACNEX uh, registry database, maintainers that are uh, in uh, the database of um, LACNIC. I'll note that uh, is the autonomous systems that uh, are in uh, the database of the registries of LACNIC, route and route six, route and route six that are associated to the ROAs and the RPKI generated in the system. And finally, we have the AS set uh, objects okay. that are the only ones that have their own form for management for administration. By filling in these uh, forms, uh, you generate these subjects in the IRR of LACNIC. Well, you saw that first video where we speak of the objects that are published in the IRR. Three of the objects are generated based on registry information. Other two objects are based on RPKI and ASR is built by the operator and it depends on the usage they want to give it. Uh, to give it. Andrea, if you if there are any questions, please let me know. Yes, of course, I'll let you know. Let's see how you generate an AS set in Melaknik. After authenticating Melaknik, I go to service, IRR, and in that screen, I go to the AS set tab. I find the ASN I want to work with and generate an AS set as I go to the button AS set and then a form appears and you can associate a group of autonomous system to the one that i'm working with for instance i want to create an as set to publish who my providers are so i use the field description i put the name providers and then i go to as and members and i write the um, provider and I'm going to use the field remarks and I put a comment saying my providers. Now I save and this creates an AS set describing who my providers are. Now let's make a richer one. For instance, an AS set describing who my providers are. So I'll do an AS set with my providers and my clients. There, uh, I put peers, and indirectly, I'm going to include my clients and my providers. And in com and remarks, I put, for instance, my peers, and I save. So, with this trick, indirectly, and with the AS set and peers contains the AS members that are present in provider and in client. Now we just saw how to create an AS set. And with the users that I created one with the users that I wanted, but you can define it. You have to define the use that you want to give. You put a descriptive name and the use that you're going to give to that group of ASNs that you created. I used the resource of including in my AS set uh, autonomous systems directly, and I, I can also include other AS sets so that in the future, if I want to add a new client, I can add it to the AS set clients, but automatically it's added to the AS set peers. There's also a possibility to combine AS set members and ASN members of the same. Uh, so I didn't do it, but uh, you can do it. It's a, a possibility that is there. Yes, we have uh, two questions now. The first one is by Emmanuel Serrano, Spanish, and it says, Good morning. At present, we have a, a change of advertising of segments in a slash 16 and a slash 20, slash 21, such as for diff by different links in the same ISP. I have identified that some of my new 
uh, advertisements are not recognized as valid by the IRRs. What recommendation can you give me to make these new segments valid? Well, the client is recognizing it as invalid. One of the possibilities is that you have created an ROA in a declaration and your ISPs are announced through an autonomous system. And when you start announcing them with a new prefix or a new way of announcing them, that authorization that you had uh, previously contradicts what you have now. So there you go to the RPKI of La Creek and you build the ROA that actually uh, reflects the reality that you have new blocks. So the recommendation there is to go to Milaknik and to check uh, the status of RPKI and see whether there are any inconsistencies in what is generated and what you are announcing. Perfect. Thank you. The next question, Enrique Avila in Spanish says, hello. We are a small ISP in Peru. At present, we have two carriers for internet. I understand that one of the carriers generates a, an ROE certificate. My question is, if we implement RPKI, uh, the carrier will need to generate these ROE certificates. Well, it depends. If your ISP uses networks assigned by LACNIC, you are responsible for generating the ROAs. You have to go to LACNIC to get in touch with the administrative uh, contact and you see the recommendations or they may ask uh, how they are. And, and then you build the ROA where you authorize your provider or the autonomous system in your network to announce your prefixes through an ROA. If in your ISP they're using provider networks, the provider is the one responsible for creating the ROAs, allowing you to use their networks in your autonomous system. Perfect. There are no more questions so far. Wonderful. So let's see uh, some other video. Ahí ya comenzaste a compartir porque no lo estamos. Have you started sharing because we, we don't see it? A ver, nuevo. El video se trata de cómo crear. The video okay. deals with how to create objects, route and route six objects. Thank you, Andrea. To create route services and I go to servicios R R and in the screen, I go to route. The route objects are managed in only one place and they are equivalent to ROA in RPKI. So what, so LACNIC takes the ROAs and generates the appropriate routes and route six. Let's see an example. Let's manage route and route six. And uh, here I have a, a warning saying that when Reddit, editing the ROAs, I end up uh, uh, changing the IRR. I go to the ROA, I create an ROA with this IPv4 and with this IPv6. I delete the rest. My ROA, ASN, to 8001 create through this uh, through this action this generates the rpki um, object and uh, the irr so you have a route and a route six route six this is the route six object and this is the route uh, object that i created in this example so far we've seen how to create uh, I don't know whether there are any more questions. Yes, there's one by Carlos Gutierrez who says, are there any differences between uh, LACNIC, IRR, and the uh, RE, RADB? Yes, those are two IRR information providers. A re 
RADB have their systems, they, they create their objects and they publish them. And uh, the IRR Vladnik uses some, another mm, a point of contact between the two IRRs is that there's a concept that in which you can copy the information of another IRR. Uh, and through that, then RADB uh, uses the data of Lacnic and the other way around. So that, that's a point of contact. Perfect. There are no more questions. So we can go on. Let me show you a brief video when, when I sh where I show you the persons, the maintainers. Well, here it says how to manage the ASET and the route objects. Let's see the complementary objects. The persons, the Ognun and the maintainers are objects that were created just to preserve the integrity uh, of the data so that information that appears in the IRR may be complete. To facilitate the use in the IRR of LACNIC, this information comes from the registry database that we already administer. That, that is, that uh, the generation of people, of persons, is created through the context and, and maintainer is produced through the organization information, while the TNU is created through the autonomous system, the information of the autonomous system. So by managing your contacts, and your organization and altering uh, the context of the autonomous systems, you end up altering the information of the IRR associated to these objects. So we discussed the three complementary objects that enrich the, uh, the primary information that in the end is what has impact on uh, the operations that are the route, uh, the route six and a set. Any more questions? Maybe we can see some other video then. To consult the IRR of LACNIC, we have four options. In serve, you go to services, IRR, and the first tab, RPC, RPSL, has all the objects associated to this organization. And it has, you can filter by type of object, by status, by a free field, and uh, some tasks. The second uh, consultation option is the who is. There is who is for IRR LACNIC-NET that supports uh, queries to the database of IRR. The third option is MILACNIC query. This allows you to consult the different uh, databases that are managed in LACNIC. For instance, ASN 2008, uh, 28,000, and one and you search and the system shows me the information associated to 28001 both in whois and in lacnix irr finally we have the ftp where we publish all the rpcl format objects generated by the irr these are the four interfaces of consultation that the that lacnix irr has Leonardo, um, let me tell you that we have 1.5 minutes left in your presentation. Thank you, Macarena. Well, we, so I showed you, uh, I walked you through the services that uh, are available and how the members can declare that they use their resources and how this this question of how they are used has a more immediate uh, impact on the operations of the companies. We also saw that in order to solve this problem or to solve the funnel that gets formed when an operator needs to click on Melagnik and the API appears as a communication interface between the systems of the operators and our own. And we go more in we went more in depth in the different options of milaknik i don't know whether there are any questions you have 30 seconds to ask it 